What's going on, you lot? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're doing a Q&A about impatience. Don't let me drown. Don't let me drown. I always get questions about impatience, and I thought, hey, while I'm getting ready, I can sit and answer questions. I'm getting a new phone, you know, guys. <laughs> So I asked on Twitter for questions because Junk Sharp asks How heavily regulated was your schedules under various sections? None of the adult wards really have schedules that I've been on. They have things set up that you can go and do, like activities, you can go and do like gym, walk if you have leave, but it depends. Like if you're in hospital informally, you can obviously leave the ward. If you're on a section, you have to have section 17 leave. It's really hard to fight to get if you're known to be a flight risk. Nothing to be ashamed of, but some patients, if they get the opportunity, like me, just leg it and staff have to be responsible and they like, is this person actually stable enough that if they did do a runner, they could they would they be okay for it until they got brought back? That's the mentality behind it. So when it comes to schedules, there aren't really any. Um, there's usually a whiteboard somewhere with a list of what's going on in the day. And if I can find a photo from my phone, I will put it here. First stupid o'clock in the morning, never eating breakfast. I've never had breakfast while I've been in hospital. They have to wake me up to give me my meds and then I fall back asleep. And then give you lunchtime, which is 12 to 30 ish. Evening meal is 5 pm. Visitors usually start from 2 pm. There's some wards I've been on all day, like 8 am to 8 pm. Apart from restricted time, restricted times are meal times because obviously there are patients on the ward that have eating disorders and they don't want to eat around people or strangers, especially they don't need more people around. That's why meal times are restricted time. But when it comes to schedules, the main thing is meds and meals. Obviously different sections have different time lengths. So section five part two has 72 hours, section one through six, 24 hours renewable by up to renewable by 12 hours Section three is six months renewable consistently. Section 37 is a like a court's judgment it, it, like, it gets really complicated when it comes to sections. Next question is from Julie. So, is being impatient scary, boring? Scary or boring? Um, right. So, portray accurately in films? No. So, what a ward looks like. I'll, I'll put some pictures on screen now, but the first time you go in, it's intimidating because you're in a room filled with people that you don't know that are struggling themselves. You know, it's... It's intimidating. After a day or two, you kind of just get you. I get used to it. I adapt really well to different to like new situations, though. So it varies person to person. But is it portrayed accurately in the media? Absolutely not. They're technically speaking a safe place, and they're a hospital. Like they're not there to be fun. Oh my god, I've got bronze all over my forehead. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Because we're in with my highlighter stick, Molly. Was it scary for you? At times, I got attacked by a patient in my last admission. I've only been attacked once by a patient. Then you say, if you've seen any patients getting restrained. Not really. Have I myself been restrained? Yes. Um, when I was self-harming, obviously they came in and removed the blade from my hand and, you know, they, they sedated me. But I took the tablets. It was an option of take the tablets or, you know, you're getting injected deal with that so I, I, yeah I always took the tablets but they try and do it as privately and as secretively as they can which is good because patient confidentiality yeah. they try and do it as privately as they can all staff have an alarm bell and if they see something or they're concerned or they think you're self-harming they're not going to go in on their own or they'll go in see you doing it and pull an alarm when I was in A&E it was different because if you do something in an A&E, it's dealt with differently to in a psychiatric unit. If you self-harm in A&E, they don't have an alarm. They have to pull the crash button, which means all of the staff are running in. Because they're just, if they've just pulled the bell, that means you're, like, dead. Yeah, the whole A&E thing is a different experience, and I will make a different video on that because it's a whole different process. But no, I, I and honestly, I, I haven't seen that many people getting restrained. When I was in Lancashire in hospital, I saw two of my friends getting restrained, and watching it happen to someone else is heartbreaking. Having it done to you, you kind of dissociate, like, you just don't care. You, I, I care more about other people than I do myself. So when I saw it happening to other people, I'd get emotional, which is why, honestly, I spend most of my time in my room where I'm in hospital because some of the patients do scare me and I have bad anxiety. Hospitals are not great, especially psychiatric units 
because you never know what to expect. Well, there's only funny incidents that happened. <laughs> I've got half got a funny story. The thing is though, a lot of my friends I've met through hospital and I wouldn't know without like the whole mental health community and I'm actually so grateful to be, not, not to have mental illness, but to be a part of the community of people. Like, you don't realise how nice it is to have someone the other end of the phone who actually understands what you're going through. And especially when you're in and out of hospital, like having friends that understand what you're going through and don't judge you for it is sometimes what you need. I know for me, my family aren't involved in my life, so whenever I go inpatient, the first person I will go to is my friends, not my family. But yeah, I hope this video has answered some of your questions about inpatient. If you do have any other questions or want to hear some more stories, because believe me, I've got so many stories that I could tell about like being in like units because I've done a lot of insane shit. <laughs> um, I screamed up through the ceiling once on it from a table when I was drunk in a ward. Don't get drunk when you're in hospitals. It just it's not a good idea really.